I think American government has found a way of demarcating what it is permissible to say and what is offensive and dangerous uh, without going to law. And I think that, that sets a precedent of how you can decide. I don't think it is terribly good when powerful individuals uh, phone up institutions and by the tone of their voice have meetings cancelled. I think there may be very good grounds for objecting and protesting. I think it is permissible to lobby. But I think that kind of intervention is not a good idea. And I certainly don't think that we should leave the defense of the weak and the marginal up to the advertisers, which seems to be what Philip uh, believes is the way to defend our, you know, interests. Uh, uh, all I said Philip that we, All I said that, that, that he's trying to refer to in that bizarre quip is that the reason that you don't have the word nigger or that you don't have a lot of the derogatory images that he was sort of proposing in a heated moment that, would you like to see these things return to the public airwaves? So, um, was, they're not on the public airwaves, not because we've actually outlawed them and thrown everybody in jail in Austria, as you advocate, but actually because no, they're, not, exactly they're not on the public the record, airwaves. The because one would not get an audience for them, because people would protest those stations, because people would make firm phone calls, exercising their freedom of speech to say, you know what? We don't want anything to do with you. And you'd have no basis, I bet. You've never made a phone call, you've never asked a question, and you've done no reporting to find out whether Abe Foxman made that call, which has never been proven. I said on the board of Penn, we raised the Tony Jutt question. Absolutely nobody could ascertain whether or not Abe Foxman made that call. He may have made it, or he may not. Somebody made the call. Well, but you're very, syndrome. very, very <laughs> confident. You're very, um, very, very confident in accusing somebody in public of something that you know nothing about, which is gross ignorance. But I, no, I would like to finish something uh, for a minute, oh, Jeffrey. Well, I'm uh, not done. Go. Which is that the gentleman with the British accent who asked the question earlier of David Cesarani, which he ducked very carefully. He, he raised the question, why is it you're so nervous about sort of the broad public as opposed to in his, in his sort of defense of or his criticism of enlightenment thinking and of Mill and of this one and that one. He, he, he sort of yearns for a clubby time when you could count on the few select elites having, having a kind of common agreement and that now what's dangerous to him is the proliferation of voices, the, the idea that there are many ideas out there on the internet. Oh my goodness, and we can't regulate them and they might get in the hands of the wrong people and we can't even agree who they are, and, you know, for goodness sakes. Those clubby people, as they might have put it, you know, even the Jews could have an opinion. I mean, wh wh why are you so concerned that there might actually be some unregulated voices out there? You know what? Okay. Let's just go to a question. Um, I think that it's, uh, it's sometimes a lot harder to defend a very hateful personal speech, like when uh, hate groups leaflet the lawns of a neighborhood where a, a black family has just moved into a white neighborhood. We're but, running low on time, but Daisy, so get to a question. Do you really please. think that it's a problem that we had uh, cartoons that were, you know, unfortunately, I guess it was distasteful to Muslim people, but cartoons in a newspaper that were quite, you know, humorous, really, and I think they were talking about quite a legitimate political issue. You know, do you really want to ban that kind of free speech? You don't want to allow editorial da cartoons? Da that's a fair question. We, we, we've sort of done this we question. Do this Let's, we've done yeah, the Danish yeah, cartoons. Let's get yeah. Okay. I, I, I think that's a good point. Go up there at the top. Um, I would just like to know, and I, I'll be the first to admit that I was not aware of this whole discussion about the uh, cancellation of this meeting, but when Mr. Foxman or if anyone who called and got it canceled did so, were death threats part of of the uh, reason they no, were no, they were not. You know, let's let I mean let, let's put you. Abe Foxman and Galileo aside and and, um, and, and well, I do have I do have a jump point that I would like to make. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll make it quickly. Okay, quickly, um, Christopher. After yes. my punch up with George Galloway recently, I, I was asked by the Republican Jewish uh, Committee in Washington to come and speak to their do uh, down at the old temple and talk about the old for food program and other things like that. They put my name on the bill, and then a gentleman named Mort Klein, who some of you will know, he's a madman who runs a thing called the Zionist Organization of America, kicked up a terrific fuss um, because of some of the remarks I'd once made about Theodore Herzl, among other things, and got the meeting canceled. Now, I don't particularly complain about that, as a matter of fact, and I don't share in the tremendous steam bath of self-pity that Mr. Junk has managed to generate. For <laughs> you have a right to your opinion. You don't necessarily have the right to the audience of the Republican Jewish Committee. They can decide not to have you. That's okay. I, I'm just trying to say 
Um, just for once, if we could stop people intruding things that don't belong in this discussion and save such a lot of time. Two more questions. This gentleman right here. Where do you draw the line between free speech and political correctness? You know, that's sort of, we've of been question. dealing with that issue generally. Why don't we get to this gentleman over here? Uh, no, this gentleman in the white shirt. You get a microphone. Stupid uh, boring question should be disallowed. Uh, no, 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 but, but we need the microphone for radio purposes. So. You can't speak loud enough so that all of WNYC can hear you. Thank you. Just a quick question. So one of the things I noticed in the panel that no one talked about the civil rights movement and how that's affected the topic here. And also, just quite frankly, how come there's no African-American people on the panel? And I'd just like to get your thoughts on that. Next. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think that's a point that everyone can take for what it's worth. At the end, at the, end at, at the top, at the very top, underneath the light. Yeah, that's you. That's you. Go ahead. Okay, this is a question for Marie. And you talked about women in the workforce. And I don't work on an oil rig, but I do work on a trading floor. And I'm just wondering if you think that by limiting what people can say to me if that's actually protecting me from what people are thinking about me and whether when I come into the office I need to take care of myself. Good. Mari? And I, I trust that you can. Um, but there are circumstances in which women have left jobs because they could not handle the relentless and brutal um, assaults on their personhood. And this is why in civil rights law, to respond to the earlier Not question, a free expression. Wait, wait, wait. Well, the reason um, in civil rights law and anti-discrimination law we do limit speech in the workplace is that ideas about your inferiority, um, about your inherent lack of worth as a human being and your lack of entitlement to equality in the workplace, if they're expressed regularly to you, create an environment in which it's impossible for you to do your job on an equal basis with everyone else. Do, does someone and, on this side want to address Mari's point, which she's made, which is that there is you know, the, this kind of speech, har harassment. I mean, is that speech you seek to protect? I get that kind of speech all the time. Uh, one of my favorites was being called a liberal cocksucker. <laughs> now, I don't know whether that means I cocksuck liberally or I only <laughs> suck liberal cock or I just am not quite sure. But I didn't call the police on it. <laughs> and furthermore, half the people who write me horrible, horrible things. No one has seen my mail. They all started, Dear Mr. Wilkinson. <laughs> so it's not as me, me as a woman, it's me, it's the ideas I put in the paper. And if we can't discuss those ideas, even when they talk to me in loathsome, funny uh, ways, we can't talk. And the one thing I would like to say about the, the whole Danish cartoonist thing is, that it changes, having had that confrontation has changed minds on both sides. The <clears throat> BBC reported that uh, about two weeks, two weeks ago there was another minor dust up about it, but the reason you didn't hear about it is because the Muslim side realized that it really wasn't great PR to kill people in Pakistan to protest cartoons in Denmark. So it's, been, it's a much different uh, protest. It's been handled differently on both sides, including the Danish side. This is how we learn. <laughs> we learn by conflict. We learn by calling each other thing, things that, eh, well, maybe weren't a good at, idea at the time, but we can do it differently next time. I, um, at this, I, I'm, forgive me for interrupting. It's yep. now time to vote. Um, if you want to vote for the motion, everybody's got their cards. Um, you want to tear off this, the, the greenish-blue, kind of a uh, aqua side. If you want to vote against, you tear off the red side. And if you don't know where you stand, you just put the entire ticket in the box. Um, now, can I, ask you to, can I ask everyone to please vote quietly? The boxes will be passed around. Yes. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's going to go on while you, you're going to talk while they're doing it. You're going to start right away. Um, no, we're going to do final, and, and while you're voting, we're going to go to final statements, and uh, the order is, please begin uh, against the proposition, Mari Matsuda. I mean, do, you can stay where you are. All right. <laughs> yeah, we did, we did dock some of her time, my... <laughs> 
The N-word is hollered out from a passing car to let a black man know that he 